Welcome to Python Beginner 2, Variables and Data Structures. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Variables are one of the most important parts of programming. Variables allow us to store data. We can store different values like integers, real numbers, booleans, strings, and more complex data structures like lists or dictionaries. Python reserves space for a value when the variable is declared. To declare a variable, we use the structure variable name equals a value. So, let's test this out. What we're going to do is I'm going to open up my Ubuntu VM and we're going to do some Python. So, let's open up our terminal and open up the interpreter by typing Python. In the interpreter, we'll create a variable called my number. My number. And we'll make it equal to 3. Now that's created a variable called my number, and it equals 3. We can now print out that number so we can check what's in it. So let's type print and then the variable name. So my number. And it will print out 3. We can also change the values of a variable and we use the same way we declared it except because we're reusing it we're changing its value. So we go my number equals 10 and we've just changed the value to 10 and let's print it again to see it and it prints out 10. This is pretty cool however it's not very useful currently. Let's look at some arithmetic math we can do with Python. Python allows for seven basic arithmetic operators. That's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, exponent, and floor division. Now, most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Modulus is dividing a number by a number and getting the remainder. Exponent is to the power of and floor division is dividing and then rounding down. Okay so let's try out some of the, the some of the operators. We'll start with the plus. So what we can do is we can make our, our number, so my number equals 10 plus 90 what that will do is it, it will add the two together and then save the answer into our variable. So now we can print out my number and we get a hundred. So this is very nice for doing math. Let's subtract 50 from my number. So what we can do is we can actually use my number on the right hand side as well. So if we make my number equals my number's current value minus 50. So what this will do is we'll get what my number's current value is minus 50 and then save it back into itself. So we set, pass that into the interpreter and then print it out. My number, we get 50. So we can do the same thing, but we can use uh, a shortcut. Now, most arithmetic, or in fact all arithmetic operators in Python, have a shortcut for uh, modifying the original variable. So instead of having to type my number twice, we can just type my number minus equals, minus equals, well, there we go, minus equals 50. So what this does is it does exactly the same thing as our last line except we only have to write my number once. So what it does is get my number minus 50 and make it equal. So we hit enter on that, print my number, we get zero. Now there's a lot of shortcuts and it does it for every single 
uh, operator in Python. And there's a link to all the other sorts of operators in Python in the description. Now, float division. Float division's a little bit more complex. When we're dividing, if we were to just divide 121 by 50, we would get an incorrect result. Let's test it out. So we do, let's go my number equals 11 times 11. Now if we print that out, we get 121. Now let's try dividing 121 by 50. So we do my number divide equals 50. Now if we print out my number, we'll, we'll get ugh, number, my number, we get 2, which isn't correct, because we should get 2.42. So let's, let's talk about float division. So float division is dividing correctly uh, to decimal places. So if we do if we do my number equals one to one dot zero so this makes our our number a float rather than a whole number and we divide it by a float so fifty point oh and then we print it out my number we get two point four two and that's the correct division. So remember that we need to specify that the number is a float if we want it to be divided as such. Otherwise it'll be divided as an integer and will be rounded down. If we want to do floor division, so that was the double slash, if you remember. Go back, double slash, float divi floor division. What we can do is we can also do that on floats. So we go back to our VM. My number equals, we'll do slash slash equals, so floor division. Actually, what we'll do is we'll just make it equal 121.0, floor division 50.0. So if we do this and print it out, we should get 2. And this is because we're, f we're forcing fl uh, floor division. So we're flooring the number after we've divided. Now, let's look at some more complex variables. The string type is basically text. So we surround our strings in quotes, just like we did with our hello world. So the string is a bunch of letters that we want to remain as such, not turn into um, numbers. So we can make a, our variable. So let's make our vari a, a variable called text, and we'll make it to hello world, and close it quotes, and then we can save that to the variable. So now that text variable holds a string that contains the letters hello world. Now if we type print text, we'll get hello world. Strings are that easy in Python. Of course there's more we can do with strings, however that will be covered another time. Now we come to more complex variables. Lists. For lists, lists hold an array of values. We declare a list with, a, with square brackets. So for example, nums equals square brackets. We can then add values to that list by using the dot append function. Nums dot append 21. This will add the value 21 to our list, and then we can print out that list with the print function. Now, let's let's have a look at it. Come back to our Python interpreter, and let's create nums equals a list, and then nums dot append 
open brackets, and then the value what we all want to put in there. So let's put 21 in there. And then let's add some more. So let's go nums.append 40.5 nums.append I'm not a number. So there we go, we've added three different types of variables into our variable of lists, or our list variable. We can now print out that list by typing print nums, and Python will handle everything and it will print out our list in the square brackets. Lists are just that simple. It has many other functionalities, but, for, but again, that will be covered later. Lastly, we have dictionaries. Now, dictionaries are similar to lists, but use a hash map. If you don't know what a hash map is, pretty much it uses a string key and a value and like stores a value to that key. So we use a colon to separate the key from the value. So if we think of a dictionary called services, and we have we set the values FTP to 21 and the value SSH to 22. We can print the dictionary three ways. So let's let's quick, quickly have a look at it. If we create a our dictionary, let's call it services, and make it equal to FTP colon 21, and then SSH colon 22 and we'll add SMTP and save that to 25 well make that equal 25 and then make HTTP and set that to 80 and then we close it off with this squiggly bracket now we hit enter that will save our dictionary to that variable name and we can now look at the dictionary three different ways. We can print the whole dictionary with our normal print function print services and we'll get our list just how it looks when we entered it or we can print it to see the keys or just the values. So if we want to print it to see the keys we type services dot keys and we put brackets on there and it will print out just the keys so FTP, SMTP, SSH and HTTP or we can print out just the values so if we do services dot values brackets it will print out just the values in the list in order of how they're stored so that gives us our list of values and this concludes our look at variables. Next, we'll be looking at input and output. Don't fear if you don't remember all of this. You can easily come back and rewatch the video to consolidate all the information. And if you have any questions and can't find an answer after a quick Google search, feel free to leave it in the comments. Next, we'll be covering input and output. And thanks for watching.